Is that what you do? Do the whole front end first? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. yeah. you've just done more bits and pieces. Yeah. Whereas the back is the one whole thing. Yeah. Or there's adjustable front sway bar link pins. Yeah. So we're going to have better, better strength. Yeah. Plus, it's going to give that little bit of evenness back up. Yeah. Yeah. For wheel alignments and the steering and your controlling. We're back down here at Midcoast Four Drive Centre to day three of the build now. Today we're doing full suspension day, so doing now the nav is coil springs all around, so doing four coils, four shocks, and plus I'm also doing a bit extra in the front end today, adjustable upper control arms, front sway bar, link pins. The suspension I'm doing is the Ironman foam cell pro kit. Yeah, so Blake's out the back working on all that now. But I thought I'd come back to the shop and run through, I guess, uh, why you fit aftermarket suspension, so the benefits of suspension. Starting to build, Tyler, you're adding a lot more weight. One of the main reasons is to, yeah, to, to upgrade your suspension is to carry that weight. And behind us on the wall, different uh, grades of Ironman suspension, starting with the gas, the foam cell, and then the, the big boy foam cell pro. So is that the one I'm getting in my car yeah, today? Yeah, this is the one you're getting in the car today. So that's kind of the top end of the range. The top end of the range. Top end of the range, yeah. so depending on how much you want to spend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah and this is what comes in your car. Uh, when you bought it, yeah, so okay. you can see the difference between uh, what we've what we've got here yeah. and then what we're going to do here. Yeah, so you can so see you've gone a lot bigger yeah, and stronger. Right, yeah. And what we're finding um, with people that don't go and uh, and they, they put a lot of accessories on their car and they go travelling in the outback yeah, and then right. forward driving yeah, in the bush. Yeah, and um, after they put a lot of weight on the vehicle, what we find is um, your spring uh, comes down, and then when you haven't got the strong spring in there to handle the extra weight you get a lot of spring, spring and clash and yep. what spring clash is is when you don't have enough gap between your spring and the weight yeah, yeah, and when no, you hit no, a big no, hard no, bump no, or you go no, into no, a, a rut or something like that really like this that. clashes together and what you then you'll feel a big like clash when it happens a lot it results in chassis and bull bars <coughs> and all parts of the car starting to crack because you're not riding along on a smooth. So by getting a, a 40 or 50 mil lift, you're getting 40 or 40, 50 mil more travel yeah. in your suspension. So more for it to like, yes. uh, That's right. work yeah. with it. And then because you've got, you've got a strut here with your coil, what this does, this controls that coil, that stronger coil. So you yeah. you get a, you're getting a nice recoil from it, and you're not there's yeah. no there's no um, bouncing along or anything like that. And the reason the foam cell pro <coughs> is um, developed by getting a bigger size, you, you're keeping everything cooler because there's more liquid inside, there's yeah, more oil. Yeah. Being a foam cell. It has a foam sleeve in there that transfers the heat out through the wall of the shock absorber yeah. into the, the cooling fins in the struts. And what that does is that keeps everything cooler. So when suspension's cooler, it always works better. So is that the main benefit of your foam cell over your gas? Yeah. Just that better cooling, like yeah. more liquid in there, bigger, yeah. bigger yeah. product. That's, I guess that's the first reason for fitting suspension is to support rough off-road conditions. The second reason would be to support weight. So with mine, I got heavy duty suspension for the front. Um, you do actually need to think about that before you get uh, suspension. Like if you get suspension first, you need to think about what you're going to fit to your car later. So, so for example, with mine, I got heavy duty in the front because I know I was fitting a bull bar, winch, lights, all those things in the front. And then in the back, I got 300 kilo to 600 kilo because I know I'm putting a rear bar plus on my camping gear in the back. Your suspension has all different weight classes. When you're building a car, you kind of have to have a bit of an overthink about what your final product's oh, going to be. And it'll be interesting to see what you actually think after yeah. you put this suspension in because most people come back and can't believe that their car rides actually better than when, when they bought it. Yeah. And that's yeah. what we try and achieve. Yeah, that uh, smoother, nicer ride, better steering. And yeah. that's going to help with those extra parts I'm putting in today, those adjustable Top upper arms. control arms yeah. and things. The third reason for fitting suspension <coughs> is to fit your bigger off-road tyres. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. actually a common misconception and one that I thought when I first got into four-wheel driving is that suspension gives you more ground clearance which it doesn't. You have to actually get the tyres in to then lift your diffs and chassis and everything up. So suspension will only lift the body up. It'll give you that more clearance in the wheel arch which will allow you to fit those bigger tyres. No worries mate, well, I hope you're going to be really happy with the outcome anyway. Yeah, yeah, I'll be keen to see how it goes yeah. once it all comes together. Yeah. I'll uh, head back out there with Blake and see, yeah. see how much see, it's done. see what they've done. Hey, 
How's it all coming along? So you got what do you got in so far? Just that front so you press them. Do you press them on? Yeah. Yeah, press that coil over onto the shock. Take it off. Take the old shock out and you're gonna take the scrap top off the old shock. Yeah. Put it on and set this one up. You've got to set these at a certain height. Yeah. They're normally 105 mil. Yeah. Because you've added a bull bar. And we inch of added two extra mil, so yeah. it keeps it. So that's the extra weight. Yeah. So these are adjustable, yeah. uh, adjustable shocks or whatever. Yeah, adjustable, yeah. yeah. Oh, not like dampening, but height adjustable. Yeah. yeah, so you can make the lift a little bit yeah. smaller or bigger. Yeah. So that's in, and now you've got to what, pull that up and control it on there. Yeah, the only thing you've got to watch out for is my cable tie these up, and you can slip. The drive shaft can pop out, yeah. and then sometimes they don't go back in properly. I've never had it happen to me, thankfully. Yeah. But sometimes put it back in there. Go, yeah, okay. That's why I always keep it. So you don't have too much flex or yeah. stress weight. Yeah. Factory ones is the new ones. Yeah, a bit more. I'll just quickly run through what we've done so far. Well, what Blake's done, not me. Um, he's got so got the as I said, we're doing the Iron Man lift kit today. So Iron Man Foam Cell Pro lift kit, which is kind of the top range one. Um, you know, best quality one. So we got the front shock and coil over in. He's got the upper control arm out. Put the new one in. Now this is the old factory control arm, upper control arm that's come out, and this is the aftermarket Super Pro upper con adjustable upper control arm, um, fulcrum suspension. So full, it's done through fulcrum suspension, but the actual maker of it is Super Pro. They do like you know a heap of aftermarket suspension gear, but basically it's a bigger, stronger unit. You know, you can see it's quite a bit more chunkier, but the main thing is that they are adjustable. So when you lift things back up, you can now adjust them and balance them back down. It's not as necessary with a two inch lift that we're doing today, but it is going to help. It's going to bring, give you nicer steering, nice control in your car. It's gonna make those wheel alignments a lot better. And then the other thing that we're doing in the front is your adjustable front uh, sway bar link pins. So there's your old factory one. These are your new ones. So you can see there they're adjustable. We'll just have to lock tight the hell out of that so it obviously doesn't come loose. Um, so we adjust them out a bit longer to counter for the lift, which once again is going to help with those wheel alignments, steering, things like that. Look, I'm not an expert, I'm not an expert, so don't quote me word for word of everything I'm saying, but you get the general idea. Um, and these should be a bit stronger and tougher too. And then, you know, I'll still keep these. I've got backup, you know, should something happen to these down the road, but hopefully not. You know, they're better quality gear generally. And these are, these are Super Pro ones as well, once again, the Super Pro ones through and fulcrum, through fulcrum suspension. There's the upper control arm going in. Uh, there's your spring and shock. And then these uh, link pins will go in down here. Doing that control arm back up now. Yeah, I'll do that one from the ground. Because I've never seen it happen. Mind if you do it up when it's full droop yeah. or sitting where it is and it goes on the ground and continues and pushes. Yeah, okay. So we, same as these, we always do them on the ground. Yeah, so set them up, you know, get them mid, you yeah. can touch or whatever. Finger tight, you yeah. sit it on the ground and then you climb up. Yeah, okay. Pull up. Right, when it's at its right height rather than the full flex. Yeah, no, you can definitely see the size difference yeah. there and the, you know, those, these look like. Compared to your, yes. your proper ones. Now how come you have to pull them apart? Just for the top cap. Oh, to get that top cap off. Yeah, because yeah. they don't... Well, I mean, they do sell them. Yeah. But 90% of the time they don't come with them. If they didn't come with them, it'd be a lot quicker. So you got to undo the old one? Yeah. And then re that. repress the new one? You can't be too careful with these. I've had one let go before. Yeah. Not here, but where I used to work. And what happens when it lets go? Where's things going? Went through the roof. Straight up. Leave You just watch how they... Come apart. Yeah. So they're 
time. Hey, pressure's on. Yeah. It's all right, he's the best in the business. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, 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 I told myself that. I'm saying that. And then these go one way, obviously flat side to the top. Yeah. This. So, so you got to press it back down to get that on. Yeah. yeah. This is what takes time. And these go on to hold those bushes. Yeah. Otherwise they just flop around. That's it, she's done. Impresses it. I think that's all. I like how everything too. Because these bars don't keep tight from people like how tight you do. Tighten them right up. Yeah. And then we just gotta leave the shocks, upper control arms loose. Yep. Put it back down and tighten them up. Adjustable upper control arms and these adjustable pins. Yep. How did you go about adjusting them? Have they already adjusted? Oh, yeah. We'll find out on the wheel aligner. Yeah. So they're like, they need to go on a wheel alignment. Yeah, every suspension kit done here has a wheel aligner after. Same as anything like a lock tight at all of those parts there, lock tight at them, I'll lock tight that. I don't lock tight these ones because they got these. Yeah. Never, never done it. So if it's got a pin, you don't need to, but if it's uh, no pin, you lock yeah. tight all the nuts. So you obviously don't need to take the wheels off the rear to get into that. No. Just change it on them. I find I put more weight on them to drop the diff. Any leaf run car, I will undo the car and take them off. Because you've got to get the gear. So that's just that headlight relocation bracket. It's just like they just sit in there, don't they? There's just yeah. the pressure on them that holds them. Let's see, like, yeah. the difference in size there. So, they, they were, if you're hitting heaps of corrugation, they'll get real hot. Yeah. You see, you've got more surface area, a lot more oil. That's a bit harder to get hot. Yeah, so they're just going to be a lot more suited to your off-road conditions. Yeah, yeah. and they'll like, be probably a better ride. A lot stronger, smoother ride. Be better and damping. they give you more... Especially like the way you're feeling. Yeah. 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 That's a, yeah that's like it's double the weight. Kids' toys compared to these ones. Yeah. These are heads better. Yeah, yeah they're definitely a solid looking unit. Suspension's all in and done now, we just gotta do the wheel alignment on it. Ready for one of them on all four wheels? Yeah. And it stays in like the computer does most of the Yeah. The computer sorts it all out. Sorts it all out and then you see underneath it. It tells you what you need to do. It's obviously got in the system all the exact specifications each model's meant to be. Yeah, you just. When you select the car, you just look up what car it is.
So it's telling you what to do on the computer as you're doing it. Yeah, it just sort of gives you a number. Go to, so you just sort of get it as best you can closest to that number. What's that that you adjust in the lower control arms? Yeah, like caster and camber. Yeah, caster and camber. <laughs> Adjusting that upper control arm now. Yeah. Came up nicer after you adjusted them. Did that up as close as it. So you measure from the bottom of the rim, not the center? Yeah, bottom of the rim, so they're all the same. How did the measurements? So what, what was the measurements going? Back home for the four wheel drive shop now. Got all the suspension in today. So we got those Super Pro upper control arms, front sway bar link pins, and then we got the Ironman uh, full lift kit, the foam cell pro, which is pretty much the top of the line lift kit. Did all the wheel alignment, got all that done. Now we see I'll be getting the bigger tires on, but they're not there yet. They should be there tomorrow or first thing next week. So that'll be the next thing back there getting the tires on but it's all coming up good so far it's all starting to look good now the final measurements for that lift kit was 50 mil uh gained clearance in the front and 55 in the rear but that i think that can settle and adjust a little bit uh initially on a 20k drive home the steering and the drive of it feels maybe slightly better and it does feel slightly rougher um now, in my experience, new aftermarket suspension has always felt rougher to me straight up, but this is probably the least rough it's felt to me, but I've always found that you need that few thousand, you know, few thousand Ks and an off-road trip or two to, I don't know, I'm not, I'm just making this up, but you, you, you seem to, it just seems to, uh, you know, balance things out a bit again and, um, you know, stop it being so stiff. I do find it needs that little bit of time to, feel like you know nice to ride again and then it ends up feeling better than factory but initially it just feels that little bit rough and also because I've got in the back I've got uh, 300 to 600 kilo rated springs but don't have that weight in the back yet until I get my fridge dual battery system all the bits and pieces in the back so the back is sitting a bit stiff and high at the moment that will balance out as well do you know in New South Wales you're allowed a total of 75 mil lift is that right that's the new law it was 50 they've changed it to 75 yeah there's and and again it's a gray area yeah um, you can get things engineered yeah and which is obviously more money, more but money yeah, you can. yeah if you start going up over the fours and five inches the drivability of the car um, gets less yeah um, they sway more you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of work that are going to to get those taller lifts. Yeah, yeah. I was sort of saying before because I know I often get, why do you go say your two inch lift and you know 32s, 33s rather than four inch and 35s? And as Darren was just saying, you know, it's not really great for touring. With four inch, four inch. Yeah. So basically, like you're illegal. Can, very hard to get insurance. Can you get insurance on very that? Hard very insurance. hard to get insurance. Very yeah. hard to get insurance. Yeah. So illegal insurance issues. Sort of um, flying a flag to say, pull me over, yeah. check me out. Yeah. Get defected. The other problem is, once you do get defected, uh, they're very strict at the. Is it a blue slip? Blue slip. They're very strict. They yeah. go your whole car top to bottom. Because I know I got defected for tyres before, and they checked out every little single bit and piece of my whole car. So if there's anything else you're hiding then you're probably going to get done for that yeah, too. Yeah, so best not to raise flags. Sorry. Yeah, no, best no. not to uh, try and draw attention stay, to yourself. Stay, stay around that 50, 75 mil. Yeah. yeah, and now I guess the other thing of bigger tyres and lifts is it's going to cost you more because with your bigger lifts, you know, you might have to extend brake lines. You do need your adjustable upper control arms. Yeah. Um, you know, bigger lifts cost more money and yeah. then bigger tyres are going to cost more money. And then you get things like you're going to use a lot more fuel, you're going to get your speedo out. I don't know, like, there's benefits of both. I'm not trying to say... Don't do it. Yeah, I'm not trying to say don't do it. I'm just trying to explain why I've done it. For what I do, it's not it's not necessary like in relation to insurance, <laughs> police, and I'm doing more touring, you know, like low-range touring. The ball here, yeah. and then the piston slides down in that, right? <clears throat> so this is the, the piece here that actually um, has the oil in it. Yeah. And then see your foam cell sleeve. Yeah. So that sleeve touches on the on the bore here. Yeah. And 
touches on the housing here. Yeah. So it transfers the heat. Yeah. So relying on just the um, the oil in there to to do the transfer, it's actually transferring a solid. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. And that's full of uh, oil as well. That foam. So this is your foam cell, and that's your that's gas. gas. See, yeah. there's no, there's nothing there. Yeah. Yeah. You've got that foam. See, in there. the gas is a smaller bore as well. Yeah. As the see how big the foam yeah. is. So you got your foam in there and between that bot between the outside body yeah. and yeah. What's this called? This this here's the ball. Yeah. Okay, so that's your ball, like a piston ball. Yeah. And then the piston runs up and down in that. So yeah. that's your that's your drawbar. Yeah. 